Thank you everyone for coming in. If you're just joining us, um, we are playing the music of Curtis Fuller, as well as the music of myself and the bass player, Steve Hefner. My name is DJ Rice. And that first tune was a Curtis Fuller composition entitled A La Mode that he wrote for the Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. And if you're listening to this tune right now and you're thinking, that's not the melody, that's the, that's the third part. Um, I just want to say I ran this by a couple of different Curtis Fuller experts and none of them could tell me what the melody was. So I am sorry if that is not the melody, but if it is the melody, then I hope you enjoyed the melody. So the next tune we're going to play is a composition. <laughs> the next tune we're going to play is a composition by our bass player named Steve Hefner. And he wrote this for a trombone player who studied under Curtis Fuller named Ron Tapper, you said? Rob Tapper. So, okay, a big fan of Curtis, as we all should be, named Rob Tapper, who went to Eastman. So, Steve is channeling some of the New York energy with this composition entitled Scratch.
One more hand for Steven Starks. Comp wow, I said Steven Starks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> He's great too. <laughs> Steven Hefner on the composition Scratch. And the next one we're going to do is going to be another Curtis Fuller composition. This one is a blues that he wrote for the album The Opener. And even though I'd like to think that this tune would make sense as the first tune on the album, he actually starts with the ballad, and this tune is the second tune. So this tune he calls Hugor. Thank 
only just learned about that tune uh, this week, and I've already fallen very madly in love with it. And don't re- the reason I just learned about this tune is because um, anyone who's a jazz trombone player or someone who knows and listens to and appreciates Curtis Fuller will know that uh, earlier this week, um, Curtis Fuller passed away at the age of 86. And if you don't know who Curtis Fuller is, he was... he. He moved to New York at the age of 22. He started trombone at the age of 16, so he was kind of a late bloomer in terms of musicians, but he didn't let that stop him, and he quickly became known as one of the best of of his time and one of the best of all time and someone who I very much look up to. Um, the first jazz recording I ever heard was Blue Train, and he was the first trombone soloist I ever heard that was, like, you know, a really serious, not high schooler. So... um For me, I really hold him to this high regard, and so when I found out that he uh, that he had passed away, I actually I like burst into tears. I didn't know what to do. I kind of had this moment where I was like feeling kind of lost, and um, I gave myself the night to you know not think about anything trombone related except for you know uh, remembering him and everything that he's given to the music community and given to me through recordings and. Um, everything else and the next day I wrote this tune Um, it's an original ballad I wrote in memory of Curtis Fuller that I call uh, Full of Life hope you enjoy it Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, that was called Full of Life. And this last tune we're going to do is the story behind it is actually different than what what it means tonight. So the original story of this tune was I wrote this when I found out I got accepted into UNT 
And so coming from uh, Michigan State back to UNT, I thought, okay, I'm going south, going back home, looking forward to the future than looking up. Um, but I think, I think after finding out about Curtis's death and in general, just realizing how how stressful everything has been for everyone regarding this pandemic, I think this tune can adopt different meanings. And in this case, I think what what I'm choosing to see it as right now is. Um, you know, Curtis isn't with us anymore and, you know, I don't get the chance to meet him. I don't get to pick his brain and I don't get to find out what kind of person he was like and, you know, really, really get to do all the things that people who call him a hero get to do. But at the same time, uh, through his death, I have found out more about him than I ever knew and learned about more recordings that he's done and more projects he's done uh he does this great record called cabin in the sky where he plays with an orchestra and and i wouldn't have even known about that if it weren't for the fact that uh that he passed away so um i'm choosing to see his death as a as a positive going forward for trombones because one i hear a lot of non-trombone players talking about him which trombone players know what i'm talking about we don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of love we don't get a lot of light um, but also, um, more people are just, I think more people are kind of being open to the fact in general, outside of Curtis's death about having trombone players in their bands and having them in their, um, in their projects. And I think that's really cool. So I, I say, even though things have gone South, we're going to look up and look forward to the future of what jazz trombone can do in this music. So with that being said, here is a up-tempo, really energetic blues I wrote called Going South Looking Up.
Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Stephen Hefner, for contributing a tune and playing. And thank you for Stingray Collective for having us. Uh, see you next time.